Hello everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I'm your host Stan Rutan and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show where I try to help you spend your wine dollars wisely. How do I do that? I taste the wines, I review them and then it's up to you. I review, it's up to you. It's your palate, that's all that matters. But the idea is that I'm trying to be helpful. I'm trying to help you find that right bottle of wine and not waste your money on a bad bottle. And that's my goal. I love finding great wines, and I love finding great wines that are a great value. So I have fun doing it. And Christmas is just around the corner. Got my Christmas tree up. Got some lights behind me. I think the blinds are a little bit messed up because of the lights. I don't know if you can see them back there. My wife's been decorating frantically. I got my little Santa guy right here on the front, just kind of checking things out, checking out the program. Uh, one of the main meals of Christmas, the Christmas meal, is prime rib. And I know not all of you have prime rib. Some of you have Christmas ham. But a lot of you do have prime rib. But one of the best, 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 best matches with prime rib, well, there's a lot of good ones. But one of the better ones is Cabernet Sauvignon. And the reason I say that is because a lot of you out there like Cab. It's number one selling varietal in the United States. Uh, number one selling red varietal, excuse me. Uh, Chardonnay is the number one varietal, at least for now. Well, it's been that way for a long time, actually. So a lot of you like Cab, so it's a safe bet. And a lot of your company probably, you say, well, what would they like? They would like Cab. We're going to have some other bigger reds that I think would match up well. But Cab is a safe play and a good play. Let's just say that. So we're going to do two. The first one, oh, corks are still in them. They've had plenty of time to breathe. By the way, if you're doing cab at Christmas, uh, wouldn't be a bad idea to decant. Always safe with cab, especially if you're doing a little bit of a higher-end cab. You know, it doesn't have to be high-end in price-wise, but just a little more structure. It doesn't hurt to decant. And if you don't have a decanter, just open up the bottle, you know, pour a little bit out, shake it up, you know, just get some air into it. That's all you need to do. But open it up, you know, a few hours before, maybe even the day before wouldn't hurt because you're not going to get a lot of air, you know, through this skinny neck. But if you have a decanter, pitcher, or something, you can put it in. Not a bad idea. Okay, the first one we're going to do is uh, Ghost Pines Cabernet Sauvignon um, 2012. And interesting on the label, it says 65% of the fruit comes from Sonoma County, 35% of the fruit comes from Napa County. This is part of the Louis Martini uh, portfolio, and a lot of you are familiar, Louis Martini has been a name in wine for years and years. And this is named after the vineyard that Martini bought in 1964. So they've had this vineyard for a long time. And um, got 89 points, Robert Parker. I'm not big into... Uh, how many points critics get of it, but you know, Parker takes a lot of wines. 89 points is a good score. In fact, for a lot of people, Parker giving it 89 points would be a great thing versus some of his higher scoring wines. All right, let's see what we get on the nose. Lots of currants, cherries, Black licorice. The licorice comes through big time. You can get a bit of a little, little touch of red licorice, which is interesting. Just a pinch of tobacco. And a little bit of cedar and some rose petal. Let's see what we get on the palate. Nice, polished, smooth tannins, but good structure. I get just a hint of grip on the back end. Kind of a brighter style. Uh, there's some acidity coming through. A lot of red cherries and red and black currants. This is classic cab. This is a kind of cab, what did I say, $19? Probably, you can get it for less, I'm sure, than that in some stores. And it should be readily available. It's a Louis Martini product. 
Um, I'm sure there's a lot of stores around your area. You could also ask for it. Ghost Pines should be easily attainable. It is handled up in Washington State by Southern Wine and Spirits. So if you're going into your store, your wine steward doesn't have it, say, hey, Southern Wine and Spirits carries this wine. Can you get it for me? This is a really nice Cabernet. It's got the acidity, which would match it up nicely with food, and that's what you're looking for, just a little bit of acidity. You don't want it to be flabby. A flabby wine does not go with food. And flabby just means that it lacks structure. It's just a, a, a goop of fruit. Uh, and, and trust me, there is a place for those wines. They make great cocktail wines. If you're just sitting around enjoying wine with company, you're not sure what to get. Some, you know, that's why a lot of people buy Yellowtail because it's just easy to drink fruity wine. But if you're looking for wine with food and you're looking for a cab, this is a nice play. I'm going to go B plus on this one. I love the, the smoothness, the, yet the structure at the same time, the bright and dark fruits all together make for a really good wine, B+. Plus. Let's move on to the next one. Now we're going up a little higher in the price point. This rolls in at $28. This is from Washington State. It's some Amavi Cellars, and it uh, is Walla Walla Valley Cabernet Sauvignon 2012, so same vintage. Amavi is a, a cult winery in Walla Walla, meaning that, you know, not a huge amount of people know about it, but the people that do really like it. And um, I didn't see any scores on this one. And for those of you that uh, don't know this, in the United States, in order to call it a cab, it has to have at least 75% Cabernet Sauvignon. And a lot of you might think, well, it says cab, it's, it's cab. This one actually, I was just looking at the tech sheet on this one, this one actually has 76% Cab, 11% Merlot, and 5% Cab Franc, and then a splash of Malbec and Syrah. And that's not uncommon. Now, Ghost Pines didn't put that in their tech sheet, what, what the mix is. It could be 100% Cab. More than likely, they put a little bit of Merlot in it. This is a mostly used French oak with a little bit of American oak, just if you care about that sort of thing. Let's see what we get on the nose. This has a lot more wood on the nose, like a cedar plank sort of thing. I get a little bit of spices coming through. Definitely black currants and there's a little bit of black licorice. Yeah, let's see what we get on the palate. Nice nose on both of these actually. Now I, you know, I know this is 28 bucks. I haven't tasted it yet, but um, <clears throat> a lot of times at Christmas you'll pull out that one or two special bottles for the meal, and you know a lot of us don't mind doing that. We we don't mind spending a little extra because it is a special. I, I get to cook Christmas dinner. I do it every year, and um, I like doing it. Um, it's the one time I get the kitchen to myself. Sometimes my wife jumps in and helps, but at Thanksgiving I don't get much of a chance. To do anything. Let's see what we get on the palate. A lot deeper on the fruit with this one. I mean the, the, the dark currants really really penetrate the palate. The uh, cedar tones come through. A little bit of tobacco comes through, and almost a, I got a, a little bit of black tea, which I find very interesting. There's a nice acidity to this one, just like the um, Ghost Pines. This one has good backbone of acid which makes it perfect for food especially prime rib if you're doing that both of these wines by the way would be too much for Christmas ham um, you can do whatever you want okay I'm not gonna go there if you will like cab with ham 
do it. Knock yourself out. I'm not going to tell you what to do. But I think they are a little too big for ham. Perfect for prime rib. Good structure on this wine. Nice finish. A little, um, not quite as smooth as the ghost pines, but still the tannins are very approachable. The wood notes really um, are dominant on this one, but I think it's not so overbearing that you would not consider, you probably wouldn't even taste it with the meat, let's just say that. I'm going to go B plus on that one too, they're both excellent wines, um, different prices of course, you say well the Ghost Pines is B plus for 19, this is B plus for 28, depends on the style of wine you're looking for. Um, I'm a V, the difference between the two is Amavie will probably be an A, A plus wine in five to eight years. It definitely has the structure to lay down, to develop. Ghost Pines a little smoother, probably less likely to age as well as the Amavie. But right now, as they stand, they're both B plus wines. Hope everything's going good so far for you this December. Thanks for watching, and always remember, that it's all about your palate. Always be honest about your palate, and together we can take the snob out of wine.